is about the fourth time someone's tried to kill you. I'm an Irish Catholic with the grace of God on my shoulder. If any of these maggots from the so-called mafia want to come after me, I'm not a hard man to find. Kill the Irishman, kill the Irishman, kill the Irishman, kill the... What? You, you, you like the way I subliminally put that in your head to, to sing that song? Was that you? <laughs> it was me. <laughs> keep 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 singing that song while I put this bullet in this, the barrel of this gun right now. So <laughs> while I attach this bomb to the bottom of your chair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? You would never do that. You're not Irish. <laughs> now, I'm not going to say this movie stereotypes, but... Man, the Irish sure do love to plant bombs, don't they? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, the, the... I saw them making a bomb sandwich during this movie. Like, Put a bomb in a potato. Oh, damn. <laughs> Use it for everything like Mexicans use duct tape. It's, like, it's funny. It's to the point that it hurts the film, even though that's actually true. Yeah. Like there was something like in this year in Cleveland when this war went on. Yeah, back in the, the early Irish 70s. In the Italians in the early 70s. 35 bombs went off in one year, like blew the Just shit in Cleveland. Out of just, just in, in, what, what, just I in know. Cleveland. Well, you think there would be no Cleveland left because, you know, <laughs> really. I mean, how I mean it's a shithole really? to begin with. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's like, are you really doing anything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that's just it. Like the bomb would go off and blow stuff up, and people would flinch and then look over and not be able to tell the difference. They just kept walking. <laughs> well, that's how that Cleveland rock song started. Yeah. They don't mean it rocks like, wow, it's awesome. They mean it's yeah. literally rocking from all the yeah. bombs. Yeah. 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 Rocks are raining down from the sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a film by Jonathan Hensley. Hensley, uh, who Hensley. who most recently did a uh, uh, well, actually not most recently, but he started his career off with The Punisher with Thomas Jane. Nah. Damn, but you know he's Galen Hurd's w- husband, so you know, or Nepotism. should I say wife? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, oh, not exactly a sterling career. You know who's wearing the yeah. pants in that family. Uh, <laughs> but this is probably, well, it's definitely the best thing that he's done at this point as True. a director. Of mm-hmm. the three films he's made as a director. And uh, basically it follows around Ray Stevenson, almost unrecognizable Ray Stevenson. It took me, it's his eyes and nose that give him away. But, yeah. But like to see him at first, I had, had no idea who, he, who this guy was. Well, he was a very famous Irish-American mob boss and later uh, FBI informant named Danny Green during the 70s, who was a major news figure i mean he's one of those guys like you can find documentaries on him out there because he was such a he was called the robin hood of this area at one point because he was really charismatic he was one of those like hey i'm constantly helping out the people you know and everything yeah. and, and of course the italians couldn't fucking stand him. <laughs> yeah because when you get there's a point when you get so arrogant you start having your own variety show you yeah. know <laughs> just going hey by the way fuck the mafia <laughs> you know? some people are gonna get really pissed off at you. <laughs> yeah but it is funny how People who say fuck the mafia always kind of end up the same way. <laughs> well, under <laughs> under the water with concrete shoes, yeah. you know, generally speaking. And yeah. by the way, Leon, sleeping with nice, the fish. Yeah. It was nice knowing you. Yeah. <laughs> sleeping with the fishes, see. But uh, yeah, it's 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 a, a docudrama. You know, they they found like it, it's funny. It's almost like people like Hollywood searches around for a property that hasn't been touched. Yeah. And they found oh here's a here's a one more gangster, the one last gangster nobody's done a film on. That's yet. because he's Irish. Yeah, it's because he's Irish. They didn't think about it. It's like oh, right. we never thought about. Well, nobody that. Irish in Hollywood. Yeah, we've done we've done Italian mob mobsters and and Jewish and Russian and black Italian. Yeah. Oh yeah, and black. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. yeah. Irishman. Why, yeah. why did, okay, now we got one. Well, now, now, now re- I'm lo- well, now I'm looking forward to the Mexican version of that. <laughs> yeah, they're which, getting ready to remake yeah. the Jimmy Cliff movie, yeah. The Harder They Fall. So, you know, Are they really? Yeah, that's getting in remake. So, you know, there you go. You got Jamaican yeah. mobsters yeah. now. So, <laughs> wow. it's all, it's pretty much, they just need geek mobsters next because you do not want to fuck with the geek mafia bitches. <laughs> now, I don't know exist. how much this is true. I, I mean, that's I, right, co host. It doesn't <laughs> exist. Oh, well. No, I, I meant like in real life. You keep being clear on that. Keep saying that. You're absolutely right. No, 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 no I mean, yeah, 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 it's the, not the, real. The, the geek mafia yeah. has nothing to worry Silly, about. Yeah. No, of course I mean, it isn't. The, the, no. the geek mafia <laughs> is like below the, the, the pink mafia. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. Where's the news, cam- Where's the news camera at right now? Hey, fuck you, geek mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Kablaya! <Yeah. laughs> That's where I live. <laughs> That's Just where I eat. Yeah. Loaded with silly strength. Yeah, you're going you're, you're to get rubbed out with phasers. No, yeah, somebody's going to shoot me with a goddamn Spider-Man. Yeah, silly string. It's not the geek mafia you need to worry about. It's the nerd mafia because those are the science guys who have working phasers get water <laughs> thrown at me yeah. but uh yeah i mean you know this is all based on a true story and you know who, whoever knows how much is you know is is true i mean so much of it has to be drama just to propel it well yeah well at least the explosions are true because i noticed every time it's when something blew up they had like the actual like news uh the right. news footage at the yeah. time true. right after it was recorded Th- and yeah. that, that is something that's cool about how they cut in actual news footage so 
just mm-hmm. to go like, hey, y'all, this shit was real. Right. Yeah, so to, it's yeah there, there's there's the fire right there. Yeah. there it's there. excessive to the point, though, that it actually kind of hurts your... You're going, okay, fine, this is true, and yet at the same time, I'm believing it less right. because of how excessive and ridiculous it all seems. I mean, he this director uses uh, things blowing up the way George Lucas uses screen wipes, okay? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's just it's just like, it's so much of it in this movie that after a while, you're like, does anybody just put a bullet in someone anymore? Mm. Um, it, it, it is that kind of thing where, uh, I mean, let's just get this out of the way. This movie wants to be Goodfellas. It wants to be the no, Goodfellas mm. <laughs> of the Irish mob. Yeah. I mean, and, and Cyrus, you brought it up how it would be going so Goodfellas and somebody would come and go like, stop it. Stop stop being Goodfellas. Go go the other way. Stop doing that. Yeah. And we'd go like, oh, oh, okay, okay, we'll be our own thing. And yet it kept drifting back over there. Until oh, suddenly it was yeah. full on good ba- a yeah. bad Goodfellas imitator. Yeah, yeah, right it, yeah. it would be Goodfellas and then they'd turn it into Team America where <laughs> it's just everything is blowing up. <laughs> well, it is the kind of thing where like, like you know, um, Danny Green, he makes so many enemies. I mean, like, sure, the Irish people love him. People in the neighborhood love him. He's a Robin Hood. He's charismatic. He's a big ass tough guy who beats the shit out of people. And as an audience member, probably that's probably like the most joy you get is when he's mm-hmm. bitch slapping somebody yeah. or just beating them down. Somebody yeah, who's a because, bigger dick than he is. Yeah, because yeah. his his rise to power is just bitch slapping people. Yeah. I mean, yeah. literally. I mean, they don't explain it. They don't like the guy. He doesn't like you. He has a foreman that he just doesn't like. He bitch slaps him about five times. Well, he's the leader and, of the union. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. He, yeah. He's the leader yeah. of the union. He fucking bitch slaps the guy. And then the next shot, He's the new union he's new guy. Boss. Yeah, he's the well, new boss. It's like Law of the Jungle. Yeah. Let's, let's get out real quick just the basic plot here outside of what we've already said, which is that he's a, a, a relatively young Irish guy in the game with his group of friends, and he grew up in this whole neighborhood, and he's working the docks, and basically they're having a lot of problems with their union leader, who at this point is completely fucking corrupt, and is hey, telling hey, them- He's so corrupt, he's the warden from uh, the Shawshank Redemption, Shawshank Redemption. Okay. yeah <laughs> yeah thank you but yeah he's he's an evil son of a bitch who's obviously in it just for the money and Danny at this point is thinking about literally thinking about nothing but like how this is deadly unfair this is bullshit and so he goes up there and like, he's like look man this isn't fair and the warden's like look I will fuck up your life if you get in my way and so he goes, yeah, I don't think so. And he just fucking bitch slaps the little guy. Yeah, be- beats his henchman beats up. A, yeah. Beats his henchman d- without even breaking a sweat. Yeah. <laughs> and takes him out and steps into those shoes, which almost immediately he turns around and goes, now how can I make lots of money for me and my <laughs> friends here? Now, admittedly, he's a better foreman. Immediately, the workers are being paid literally twice what they were before. I mean, they're, he's one of those guys who doesn't take any shit. And he is, you know, he's like, I'm going to make a lot more money. But then again, so is everybody else because no one is going to fuck with me and sure enough right you know this is like i don't know how tall he actually was but the movie makes him look like he's eight feet tall well they, they yeah. actually they, you know when they at the very end they show footage of the real guy he was a tall motherfucker. he was a big yeah. guy i mean you have you have to get a big guy like ray stevenson to play this no, guy this guy was built like a brick house at least the guy portraying him in this movie so yeah he was huge. with the help of a friend of his who works with the italian mom played by a very bloated vincent d'onofrio yeah he's been that way for a while yeah maybe even more though he's like god damn dude seriously don't, <laughs> don't have a sandwich. i know like, you were the, saying the, that the about new raymond him? burr yeah. yeah the new raymond burr i know right <laughs> speaking totally. about bloated but val kilmer's also in this yeah oh. well, val kilmer yeah. uh well let me let me yeah, go back go there it, yeah. vincent d'onofrio is his friend who hooks him up with the italian mob so they start having you know like uh, you know sweetheart deals like hey i'll help you you help us no big deal we're not trying to take over your land your, your stuff at all in fact we're offering the they're offering the italian mob new ways of making business you know the smaller this this portion of it anyway this yeah. little narrow part of it and, and then you've got as you said val kilmer also looking <laughs> very bloated, bloated and jowly well, it, it's yeah. weird how every time he's he, exploding in a different way like yeah. val kilmer has been a whale for a while now yeah. and yet we still have that image of that skinny young sexy val kilmer like, so now we yeah. see him it's it's a shock every yeah. time every it time. shouldn't be a shock yeah you should be used I'm, to it i'm still like, kind of going like bruce wayne what happened because like yeah well yeah because well, like, we've, we've gotten used to people like christian bale who like get all crazy yeah. one way or the other and right then totally back to normal the next time we see him mm-hmm. Val Kilmer don't give a fuck. <laughs> well, you see Val Kilmer in like, especially the last shot in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, where he comes to the camera, and I didn't, even, I didn't even know that's him. I'm like, mm-hmm. who is this character? They introduced all the oh, same guy. Oh, yeah. Jesus! I, I, I have a fear he's like going in the way of Marlon Brando. Oh yeah, no, no. Like, matter of fact, it must have been anymore. when they were in that remake of Doc, Island of Doctor Moreau, where, yeah. where, where Brando said like, stop, stop trying to stay skinny. Yeah. Just get fat. It'll it, work out for you. Just it's fine. too bad that new Knight Rider series didn't really like. <laughs> didn't oh, really he was the voice. Night, didn't or, really or hang car, around because he was the new kid. What an and odd I'm, choice yeah. for the voice well, of it's, kid. It wasn't but, odd for him. He gets to fucking sit on his fat ass and eat yeah. all day and talk to a mic. But it's <laughs> it's weird because in gaining all that weight now, he's never in a really good movie anymore. No, it's, it's almost like it's almost like seeing Val Kilba's name in something. Yeah. You go. 
Oh, yeah. Even and though I, I I did kind of like him in this movie, but it, it, his character almost at the end of the film, it almost seemed like a throwaway character. Like he totally. really didn't. Oh, I, I thought he was a throwaway yeah. character the entire he's time. A schoolhood chum of a Danny Green who has become, gone the other way and become yeah. a cop. And there's a point that you think that this film is going to be about the two of them, right? Like, like, like it's going to be the Departed or something. Because they play yeah. it up a lot. This whole like, man, I can't believe you went this way. Uh, I'm going to get you. Yeah, you just try. And that's like the last you ever hear about it. Is yeah. that one big? like big confrontation and he's like you know what yeah. I'm just gonna eat this yeah. taco yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly I mean yeah Val Kilmer will disappear from the movie for yeah. 30 minutes yeah. he's the narrator yeah, exactly it doesn't yeah. help that he is the narrator and you're just like okay well why is yeah. this guy fucking narrating why does he Can get we... to be the narrator <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's, he's, he barely is around to know that these things yeah where happen. the fuck is Morgan Freeman <laughs> was the, was the yeah, microphone next to the yeah. craft <laughs> services yeah. Yeah. was that know, the only right. reason <laughs> why but alright so it goes along and basically Danny ends up getting you know kind of big for his britches and and is a point where with the help of uh christopher walken uh who plays a, a, a connection a sort of retired he, he plays a he plays a, a mobster stereotype yeah, mobster. Yeah. i mean honestly at the yeah. point he walks in with christopher walken coming to the screen you can't help but laugh yeah he's well, like you're happy to see him yeah you have you are happy have, to see yeah. him you are you but, know he's gonna add christopher walken to the right. film, but, but he's not stretching he's, any. No, he's, a, he's a total he's, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah a, a stereotypical mob he is. boss he, he's <laughs> kind of fun is this the first time i'll say this or he about christopher walken ever with the performance where it just seems he's sort of phoning it in you know yeah. he really is i provide a unique financial service loan sharking <laughs> it, well, it was almost like like at times I, I kept expecting him to wink at the camera yeah. like he was doing an SNL skit because or at, least, or, 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 or at least break out into a song and dance right you know, but, you know, yeah surprise like, aren't we always waiting for him to dance yeah, in yeah. any given thing he starts flying around exactly. the, the mob yeah. Yeah. Um, but here he's a, a, a retired mobster basically who, who acts as a friend to uh, Ray Stevenson's character Danny Green and says, okay, you want to open this big restaurant with the money you've earned, but you still need a lot of money to do it because you want to build it from the ground up. And you've been working for me. You've been one of yeah. my best guys. Exactly. No problem. You know what? I will help you out. Uh, I will i won't loan you my money, but I will hook up the deal with the mobsters in New York, the real Italian mob, you know, because Cleveland mob, come on. Yeah, but, yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, even yeah. when it existed, it was like, yeah. Yeah. okay, <laughs> seriously. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. the New York mob, sure, I'll get you 70 grand from them. And along the way, the courier gets jacked. A courier that doesn't belong to Danny Green. He belongs to Christopher Walken's yeah, character. Yeah, a courier it decides, oh, I'm going to take this money and, and buy some drugs and sell those to make more money. Yeah. He gets caught, and Christopher Walken says, oh, man, it's a tough break. Uh, the, the guy who's supposed to bring you the money... <laughs> It, it got taken from him. You're paying, so, you, but but you got to go ahead and pay it back. Yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. Dan Green's like, "Fuck you! Yeah. What race do you think I am?" Yeah. He does it so I'm smug. An Irish bitch. Yeah, I'm he, not paying. I know that. he does it so smug though, which is that it's the one point where I really love Christopher Walken. He's like, "Yeah, he got pinched, but you'll be paying for that." Uh, yeah. and, uh, well, I love yeah. the fact he's like, "You're you're kidding, right? Yeah. Not, yeah. You can't seriously <laughs> think because I'm like, you're like even if, I'm one of those people like you get my ire raised and I'll do stupid shit and talk shit to stupid people that's dumb and I would have done the same thing." Be like, fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> no way, you can kill my ass before I pay that shit. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and even like when people like you know, different di- di- Vincent Vincent D'Onofrio has been helping him the whole time. He's like, you know, it'd be a lot easier if you just paid him the money. He's like. Yeah, but I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, it's not gonna have it easier, sure, but that would make me a little pussy. Yeah. <laughs> and sure enough, he, Danny Green is not was not a little pussy. He stood up to the Italian New York mob, resisted mm-hmm. with like eight sui- uh, uh, assassination attempts. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they like they could not kill him. They, they kept could not. Tra- they kept trying to blow him up and shoot him, and he was, the, he was he, just too tough and too was, lucky. He was yeah. the Mick Rasputin, totally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean the you thing gotta was, like him for that alone. I mean, the was guy was. Tough. You know, he was out there to the point where he he saw himself as an ancient the the, the resurrection of an ancient Celtic warrior, mm-hmm. and there's so many things about what he did that kind of bear. You know, you can see how, why he would believe it. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody tried to kill you eight times, you still resist it, saying that all you got. <laughs> yeah. You would start to believe your own hype. <laughs> no, that's very true, and you start to believe the hype yourself watching the film the way it does it. But the biggest problem is that it keeps getting. It keeps getting off track. And you're like, if you just want to be a Goodfellas ripoff, I'm actually fine with that. I like mm-hmm. Goodfellas ripoffs. There's a lot of good There's lots Goodfellas yeah, yeah. ripoffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're a matinee film as a Goodfellas ripoff if you do it competently, almost by definition sure. in, in my book, just because I like those type of films. But this just keeps getting distracted with, like, as you were saying earlier, Leon, uh, like, no, we're not a Goodfellas film. We're going to go this totally other way for a little while, and then we're going to 
moonwalk back to being a good fellow. <laughs> yeah. Homer, really awkward. Well, let's just forget we ever brought up any of that other stuff sort of way. And there's a point in the movie about three quarters of the way through where it goes, uh, where it starts being about him really standing up to the Italian mob and being this sort of like almost a superhero story. Yeah. That mm-hmm. I was kind of with it then. I was like, wow, okay, so it, finally you found something. That's when it's at its strongest. Ground. Mm-hmm. You found something that's just you to do. Yeah. And it, doesn't stick with that either it just kind of it feels like okay i know you got to stick to the real story and what actually happened Mm -hmm. but then why'd you make a movie about it you know why did you emphasize these points when it doesn't seem to reflect the real story you know what ends up happening because that seems like the real meat of it just trying to figure out how's the mob gonna finally get to this fucking guy because he's like i mean shit they 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 throw everything at this guy including the kitchen sink and and you're just like wow this guy and this is real this really happened (laughs) and that's what really keeps you in but yeah after a while it it becomes i I don't know it 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 really starts taking you out because yeah they want to do other things and it seems like a lot of times the uh the movie seems to lose its focus for a bit and especially the point that kind of it started to get a little ridiculous for me was when they started introducing these characters who at first you only see a shadow of and then when they finally pull the focus and they shine the light on who's this mob guy that they're just going to talk to it's somebody from goodfellas or somebody yeah, from another true. mob movie that you've seen where it's the one opportunity for the for the audience to go Oh, it's him. It's that guy. And there's like about, that happens about fucking five times. Yeah, it's in this Tony Lobianco. It it's Paul yeah, yeah. Servino. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. Big Pussy from it's the Big Sopranos. Pussy, yeah. From yeah. The Sopranos. It's the boss from fucking Goodfellas. But yeah. Wow, Even they got so, him. Wow. Everything we're saying yeah. at this point still makes this film a matinee. Mm-hmm. But here's what makes it not a matinee. First off, the editing is shoddy to a point that is just embarrassing. Embarrassing, especially the past thir- first thirty minutes. Well, the first just, thirty minutes, they well, rush through the story so oh, fast, they and like, like they, they hit on things that that are interesting and just keep going past it. Yeah. It's like he's, uh, you know, he's a he's a struggling worker. He's a, he's a, the he, head of the union. Okay, now he's he's ousted and thrown in jail, mm-hmm. and that's like in ten minutes. You're like. Wait a minute! Yeah. Yeah. Slow down. Yeah, where where it makes you not knowing this guy's story it makes you think, oh, is this going to be a prison movie about how he right. was working in the inside or how he's working with the cops or something? I mean, where is this? Where is this really going? Because it, it gives you enough hints that that's what it's going to be, and it doesn't really do that. Well, you know? a big part of Danny Green, the real Danny Green, was him being a, a, an informant for the cops and the FBI. Here, they have like maybe two scenes where he's on a payphone telling yeah. them, like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, and they don't even touch on that at all. It's it's like, that's a huge deal. How can, that, is, how can you is. never bring that up again? How mm-hmm. does that not play into yeah. the plot at all? Why did you even bring it up? Right, because yeah. the you whole know? time watching the movie, you are wondering, okay, is this the point where he gets enough information where he, he's going to tell... Val Kilmer's character like have some actual interaction with that guy again at, for some at some point because you just think that's where the story should go yeah but it does not do that it loses focus it gives it goes into other things like who he's dating yeah it's and, not and, just, yeah, it's just it, shoddily edited together yeah. like that I mean it's literally sloppy there's points you're like wait that was an awkward cut it's like why would you cut right there there's no sense of flow through there's no sense of mm-hmm. you know what I mean there's no sense yeah. of technique going on no. and when you're trying to imitate Goodfellas which has you know also makes things happen very fast in the first 30 minutes or so. I mean, it's sure. like bang, 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 bang. Mm-hmm. But it is so incredibly well written and edited together. I mean, it's a work of art watching them do it. Yeah. Here, it's like someone who loves that movie but didn't understand yeah. it. It's well, just, just, being, a, just, just being a fan of Goodfellas, it really, like, if you're a huge fan of that, you're going to notice the flaws of this movie immediately because yeah. that's all you can really think about. You well, know? I mean, you know... It, it, Vinny Jones is no Joe Pesci. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. Vinny Jones being one of the guys in his crew. He's like you, you, the the the, the actors, the supporting cast. You're right, co-host. It's they're distracting yeah. because you recognize them from being iconic from so many other things, mm. and it's almost like they brought him in just because, like, oh well, everybody knows this guy. So once they see him, they already have an attachment. We don't have to explain the character any more than what we're yeah. doing. Yeah, no, I, I can only describe not. him as the longest cameos you'll ever see in a yeah. movie. Yeah, I mean, really. Well, yeah. Vinny Jones, what a weird choice he was because he's playing a Lithuanian Irish guy who's got this super heavy weird accent that Vinny Jones cannot pull off at all and sure enough even though he's in so much of the movie he only really has one scene with dialogue where you're like kind of looking around going are they yeah. kidding well he's one of those actors like I'll never know his true origins until I look it up on yeah. Wikipedia well what, that's not it because yeah. oh, yeah. 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 I'm always like what the, the fuck is this guy yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know what one thing I will say about this movie that is as much is like it had all these things that were wrong, lack of focus, writing all of like you know, some dialogue good, some not so good. Uh, something that impressed me in it over and over was the action and the explosions. It's like 
Mm-hmm. This guy Hensley, he might not know actors or setting or, or or cinematography, but he does know action and explosions. Every one of them, like the camera was <laughs> right there to where some when somebody got blown up, you got to see body parts almost separating. I mean, no, you're right. it was done in a way I was like, God damn that that. That that touched me. Yeah. It got and, the yeah. crunch right, and also there, the, there's a couple scenes where people are taking pot shots. Yeah, um, that are like, wow, okay, that was actually really that was not how you expected to see that type of scene play out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, and I agree with you. I think that's one of the high points. I think one of the other high points is that Ray Stevenson is really into it and good as yeah. Danny Green, mm-hmm. quite good. But there's a, another major problem that keeps this from being bat- matinee, and that's that if there's a cliche in this material to be touched upon. They bring it to the forefront every time. Every they just yeah. smack you in the face with every last cliche. Anything dramatic that happens in this film, you know a full minute ahead of time is what's about to happen. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Watching this, I, I thought, okay, there I got another one to the list. Like one of them is if a character coughs and someone says, Are you okay? And they go like, Yeah, I'm fine. That means they're gonna die. They're gonna die. They're sick. If yeah. if a woman uh, vomits, <laughs> it means she's pregnant. Yeah. And now, if a wife and kids are getting in the car. That means they're leaving the main yeah. character. Yeah. It's like they can't be just going on a trip. Yeah. They can't be just going to the store. Uh-huh. They can't be, oh, we're going to go see my mother. Nope. It means I'm packing up the kids and yeah. divorcing you. I, I always, always love the one where it's like, we're on top, baby. We're on top. Yeah, like, oh, God. That's the one. It's like the yeah. moment somebody starts going, man, what could possibly yeah. go wrong? It's like, Are you oh, really no. going to do that? I mean, even they, yeah. know, they haven't made that cliche in like 20 years. It's know, so right? old. The, the, the <laughs> thing is, watching this movie is hard, too, to like, anytime you see anybody walking in a car, you're like, haven't you guys seen Goodfellas? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know what's gonna happen. Why, I would get a motorcycle yeah. at that point. I know. I'm not fucking walk. Well, walk. that was one thing <laughs> that that bothered me in this. That excuse me, bothered me in, a, in several movies I've seen. Where, yeah, you know what? You know that bombs are being planted, and there's people coming who want to kill you. And yet, these people don't walk around scared. Like, if I thought even one person was out to kill me, I would be fearful of checking every single thing, yeah. being paranoid. And there's a lot of parts of the film, they just walk around like it ain't nothing. That's, no, they don't. Yeah. They, they even make a point, at least with the, with the main character, that you know he goes on the news and goes, look, I don't give a shit. I'm not afraid. Here's my house. Here's uh, where I eat. You know what? I'm right here. And, and, and you know, but saying that, though... Uh, his other friends shouldn't be doing that either. Exactly. You know, they're, they're walking around in broad daylight out in the middle of a field. Like I'm like, do you guys, do you guys really don't think anything's going to yeah. happen? Exactly. Really? I don't he, know the yeah. ways that these guys' deaths were really set up. I mean, I know there were a lot of them were indeed explosions. They weren't all. Mm-hmm. But it seems like the mob is like just allergic to just a normal, effective, <laughs> yeah. sensible killing. It's like, no, let's put him in a Rube Goldberg machine. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got a guy coming in from Albuquerque. His name's Wiley Coyote. He's really going to show this guy. He's, he's going he's gonna to be the one to bump this guy off. Yeah. I know. And he then, shows then, up. Boba Fett shows up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, it's a point of a war. And then these guys are doing everything but like moving their toilet to the backyard and putting a blindfold on while they take their shit. They're like, come on, man. <laughs> I'd show a little insecurity about this. But, but you know, I will say the one thing honestly keeping me interested in this film is the main character. I mean, yeah. as fascinating as he is, especially just realizing that, you know, that all these events did take place. It may after watching the film, it made me want to do actually more research on him more than anything. This is this would almost be like one of those movies where you can read about him and it's like a film for dummies where you just go back it's like a companion piece to to the actual story if you you know if, if you don't mind re-watching fucking goodfellas again <laughs> but you know where i i, I actually did enjoy there's lots of moments where i did enjoy this movie and i like where the, you know they brought some funny aspects to the guy like like when he was when, whenever somebody was trying to take a pot shot at him he'd go and you know give him back their own shit like yeah you know he'd basically tell her, okay oh yeah you you, you want to know why uh you fucking uh italians just they give yourself nicknames because you're stu- too stupid to remember your own i'm all and I, at that point, I was always waiting for like some Chinaman in the background to go, burn! I know. <laughs> oh, snap! You know, it, like, it, it'd be Senior Chang from Community doing yeah, that. Senior <laughs> Chang, that's exactly what I was waiting for. Burn! I was, I was in waiting your face. In your face! I was waiting for him to spit out his milk through his nose. Like, oh, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if if we can go ahead, and get rid yeah, of might as well. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, so, sorry, as you call it. You know, it, yeah. it it man, it it so could have been a matinee, and I'm 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 almost there with it. I mean, I guess I would give it a high rental because I think if you rent it, you you will enjoy because there's a lot of here to enjoy. It's mm-hmm. just it's just a shame that it's sabotaged sabotaged by all the the places where it falls down and trips. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I you know you nailed it. Everything you said is exactly how I feel. It's a high rental. Uh, it's not a terror 
terrible film, but it's an awkward and clumsy film at yeah. points, enough so that you don't really need to go see it in the theater. But sure, absolutely. When it comes out at home, and if, if you know this is your type of thing from the way we're describing it, you'll enjoy it if you rent it enough where you know you won't feel your popcorn was wasted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I was on the verge, like after wa- walking out, on uh, leaving the theater, I was really on the verge of just, it seemed like a solid matinee. Yeah. But just the more I thought about it, the more I was like, you know, there's a lot of things that they didn't need, just like the Val Kilmer. Yeah, they could have completely cut him like, out of why? it. Why? Yeah. But uh, no, it's it's funny. I'd give this a, a, a rental because that's what I'm going to give it. But the thing is, it's released by Anchor Bay, where I figured, doesn't all this shit go out on DVD anyway? So <laughs> I was actually surprised when I saw Anchor Bay, and I'm like, wow, an Anchor Bay film in a theater? Really? Yeah, it's okay. actually coming or a, out a Val Kilmer on, film in a theater. It's actually coming out in home release in July. I got, uh, are you when, serious? When we were sitting in the theater waiting for this movie to start, I was checking my email on my phone, and one of my emails was from Anchor Bay saying, "We're announcing the release of Kill the Iron." <laughs> like, wow, guys! <laughs> no, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, no, they no, won't no. release like five different versions, of this, like they did with the fucking Evil Dead no. series. Hey, hey maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll put this review on the DVD. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Expect my check. Yeah, soon. Pro- probably, probably not. But what's with the guy? He's like a, a big Irish hero, and his name's Danny Green. Seriously, you're not going to change your name or anything. No one ever gives you shit about that the whole time at all. Probably I mean, wears I like was, a badge of honor. I was laughing. My, so I was like, really? This is my son, Potato Green. <laughs> I just love. There's a part in the movie where he's like, "Oh God, look at these fucking stairs." Like. Paint him. What, what should we paint him? Green. Green. I'm going to take this city over. This guy, he went on television daring us to do something about it. Your people, you can't do a simple job? My enemies will be taken care of. I promise. You. We cannot go to war with Shindor Burns. Watch your back. 36 bombs exploded. Really think the luck of the Irish is going to save you? I have not built a bomb big enough to kill you. Give this to the man who kills the Irishman. This is one guy, and you can't take care of it. We've shot him. We've blown him up. He just won't die. 